When I moved to Sweden in the beginning of 2022, I knew I was going to change, but I could not have known just how much, how it would change everything about my life and my relationship to the world, my cosmology, my creative journey. Nothing has been untouched by my choice to move across the world. Not even my relationship to tarot and astrology and spirituality. Those things have gone through a massive change in shape and feeling. And I both lost and met myself. And I have often wondered why I chose to take on such a massive life shift. Why couldn't I have just chosen to keep my life simple? Why did I feel this call to do something that has felt so impossible so many times along the way? But I've kind of learned to stop asking why and to find a little bit of peace in the strangeness of this whole subtle process. I try to take a little bit of time now to just listen into the hum of my life, listen into what I'm really needing in the day and to stop being so afraid of how I'm changing. But during this time, I have also been trying to kind of keep up appearances, I have to admit. I've been trying to make it look like I'm just moving forward and taking it all in gracefully, but in reality, behind the scenes, I have been exhausted. I've been needing more rest than I've ever needed in my life. I have struggled, I have cried, I have wondered constantly about what I'm doing and how it's going to look and how it all fits together and how I wanna even share my story. The internet has felt very overwhelming and exhausting for me. So there's been a lot of questioning behind the scenes while I've also been continuing to just move forward in my life. And this experience of deep change has been messy and mystifying and has often left me wondering what is next. And I realized that that's the gift that I can give myself and honestly share with others as well, because I know that other creatives, other feelers, other sensitives are going through this mystifying process right now in their own way. And yet we get so little imagery and understanding about what it means to let something go, what it means to grieve something, what it means to wonder what is next, what it means to build something very quietly in the unknown. We don't get imagery enough around those topics. And so for me, I'm dreaming of 2024 being a year full of that kind of rich goodness for this community, for myself, and to be a lot more honest and open about what this process has been looking like and the things I've learned along the way. Hello, my beautiful friends, my fellow space blobs, sparkly blobs, earth blobs, or whatever form you are taking. Happy New Year to all of you. I know this is such a tender time of year for me. I always need extra support, extra rest, and a really gentle approach to the whole thing. I try not to approach it as kind of like being at a starting gate, like a racehorse and having to break open into this next year. I like to start it off a lot slower, and I think many of you are with me on that and also work with this in a different way. But I did just want to take a moment to sit with you all at the beginning of this new year, because those of you who are sitting here with me, just wanting to take that moment, it means so much. It means so much. This last couple of years, I've gone through a lot of changes and my work has changed and the choices I have made were maybe like not the most conventional choices or maybe the choices that were most expected, but I've really just had to follow who I'm becoming and listen to that really strongly. And that actually brings me around to part of the reason I'm just kind of doing a a softer, simpler little New Year's check-in with you all. I was thinking about doing a year ahead video, just kind of 2024, maybe talking about some of the things going on in the astrology world, pulling some cards, just getting ourselves set up for that new year. But every time I thought about doing it, it just felt so off. Like I just could not physically get myself to sit down and start doing it and preparing for it. And I realized that was something I actually really needed to listen to. Um, In the past, I might have just pushed through and said, no, this is what I want to do. It's important that I stick to what is known. And this time around, I actually listened, which I felt really proud of myself for doing, just really hearing who I am. And there's a few reasons why I think I didn't want to do a year ahead video. I wanted to create spaciousness for myself and for all of you. I think that there's always a question when I'm thinking about pop astrology, when I'm thinking about this internet astrology age that we're in, while it's brought a lot of great information and conversation and exploration, I think sometimes the ethics of it all can be a little bit fuzzy. 
And I think sometimes with year ahead videos, one of the things that happens is that, you know, people creating those plant ideas, whether or not we're listening to it super seriously, you know, I'll always listen to things like that with a grain of salt and knowing that I have my own mind and my own system, my own experiences. However, sometimes when I hear a year ahead forecast or that kind of energy, ideas will kind of bloom in the back of my mind and kind of hold me there the rest of the year. And I didn't want to do that this year. I didn't want to have a cookie cutter overarching conversation about this year and make it so that it feels like these are the themes and this is what it's going to be about. I just couldn't get myself to do it because I think the beauty of astrology, the beauty of tarot, the beauty of working with these tools is that it's about understanding ourselves. It's about the deep soulfulness and poetry of it all. It's not about predicting. It's not about controlling. It's not about making and harnessing a year ahead. And so I just had to start the year off really honest with myself and do something that felt really true to me. So I just wanted to show up as myself. And that actually gets me thinking about some of the wisdom that has come through for me this last year that I think is so important. And I think it would be really fun uh, for this chat if we shared, if you're feeling inspired uh, in the comments, if you want to share the wisdom that you are taking with you from 2023 and also the themes or the words or the feelings that you have about 2024. I would love to hear these. I think that would be such a valuable gift to this community to just get a read through a whole rich library of different ways that we have felt and experienced the last year and how we are connecting with the new year. I think that's so much more powerful and vibrant and alive than kind of a year ahead reading. I know for my part, 2023 has been so huge. It's one of those years where on the surface, You know, if I was talking to people at a dinner party or doing something like that, it wouldn't look like much, you know, (laughs) I wouldn't wouldn't be able to tell you the hundreds of things I've done this year, but it behind the scenes, energetically, emotionally, it has been just huge, so powerful. And I think one of the first things I learned is that showing up as myself isn't as dangerous as I thought It was my whole life. I've been learning to just kind of show up in the state that I'm in uh, to meet with people in real life, to come into this space and chat with you all and the power of that. I think I always felt like that would be the thing that would destroy me and I'm learning and it's something I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life, I hope, that really showing up less polished less like I have to put on my professional demeanor is really where my power to be connected to others lives. Uh, And that's been a really powerful and important lesson. And I also think that came with the other wisdom that I came, which is that I just have to be true to myself. Like I can't force myself to play the role anymore And even if it's super uncomfortable, even if it means that I have to make decisions that take me on a completely new path, I really have to stay true to who I'm becoming. Otherwise, my body shuts it down. It has gotten to that point, you know, and I think all of us get to that point at different phases in life. And I'm definitely there, which has been totally terrifying because now, you know, there's no way for me to kind of work around and stay in the comfort zone of what's known. I have to follow what's coming up and just find some deeper trust. And that brings me to actually the themes for this year. I think for me, I've really been needing to tap back into faith and trust, faith in my journey, faith in my creative ability, faith in myself, faith that I'm connected to something so much bigger and a deeper sense of trust. I think part of the process for me these last couple of years of dissolving and meeting myself all over again has been a lot of doubt and fear and worry coming up, understandably. That's always how it is when we're really pushing ourselves out past our comfort zones for extended periods of time. There's going to be some doubt and worry. And I think for me, it's so important to practice coming back into deeper faith and trust and really allowing myself to be in that space more often in the day to day and all the little moments that make up a day. So that for me is really going to be my guiding light this year, I hope. 
and I know that what that is going to bring up for me is going to be a little bit of mischief because you know what happens when you start connecting to yourself and really starting to have that faith and trust and connecting with that things start moving and changing. I I know that I'm asking for things to start moving around in new ways. And that that means, you know, things aren't going to stay in the same shape, and it is going to be a little uncomfortable. Uh, But I still feel like it's a really natural next stage in my journey. After spending those years feeling so overwhelmed, so stressed, so full of doubt, it really feels like a time of coming back into my knowing and my trust and my faith and just letting that be a beautiful guiding light throughout the year. Like I said, I want to hear what are what is the wisdom you have gained and what are your themes moving into this new year? I just I'm so looking forward to reading your comments. I want to wish all of you a year full of belonging, safety, connection, love, rest and alone time, if that's something that you're really needing, or community and connection, maybe a beautiful personalized balance of both of those things. Every one of us has a slightly different ratio, I think, for those things, but I think we all long for those. I wish for all of us to feel just that we belong and that we can create and be here that we can exist here. We in this community, I think, are so many sensitive spirits. And that can mean that being alive, living a life feels really intimidating hard sometimes. I think it's so important that we just give ourselves the gift knowing we belong and knowing that we deserve to feel safe and secure and supported and to get help and the resources that we need in order to keep being here and having a life and sharing with others. So I'm just wishing that for all of you. I'm really looking forward to all the journeys we're going to take this year. I'm looking forward to showing up here really more and more as myself. I know I've been saying that for a while, but I think it has been this gradual process. Uh, and I, I do feel like that's something I'm really looking forward to this year in taking this space with you all and to really having a beautiful time together. So I just wanted to wish you all a happy, beautiful beginning to this new year, hear from you how you're doing and just begin this year on a really soft and open note. So I will see you all very soon here. I hope again, and for a journey through tarot and astrology and doing it in a way that feels free from the heaviness of that culture as a whole and feels like we're just able to follow our own paths. So I'm looking forward to that. Stay tuned. I can't wait to be here again.